Welcome to this presentation on Carpal Tunnel Syndrome. The first step toward the relief of your Carpal Tunnel Syndrome is a solid understanding of what causes the pain, numbness, and hand weakness you are experiencing. That's why your healthcare provider would like to share the following information with you. You're probably here today because you are experiencing a combination of any of the following symptoms. Itching, tingling, or numbness in the palm of your hand and fingers, especially the thumb, index, and middle fingers. Your fingers may feel useless and swollen, even though little or no swelling is apparent. Waking up at night with the need to shake out your hands from them falling asleep. A sensation of weakness or loss of grip strength. Pain radiating up your forearm. Or perhaps you've even lost the ability to tell the difference between hot and cold in the affected hand. Of course, you may even have a set of symptoms that are unique to you. Work-related activities that can result in symptoms leading to carpal tunnel syndrome are typically the result of repetitive motion activities, ranging from industrial job tasks to simply using a computer mouse or doing keyboard entry or data processing. Sometimes, flexed wrists over an extended period of time will cause these symptoms. In fact, many people don't realize that they sleep with their wrists flexed, and the simple act of driving a car and holding on to the steering wheel requires the wrists to be flexed. These are just a few of the many activities that can lead to carpal tunnel syndrome. The actual anatomical reason for the condition occurring is due to a compression or pinching of the median nerve in the wrist. It's a problem deep inside the structure of the wrist, so many people with carpal tunnel syndrome don't even realize it is happening until an activity that they've repeated over and over again throughout their lives starts to cause them pain. And at that point, it is usually too late for the area to simply go back to the way it was without treatment. So, what causes that pinching of the nerve in your wrist? The anatomy of the wrist will help you understand the cause of your problem. From the lower neck, the nerves travel down the inside of your arm, and one specific branch that goes to your wrist is called the median nerve. This nerve is in communication with your brain and is responsible for sensing all the feeling in most of your palm, in the first three fingers of your hand, and part of the fourth finger as well. It also controls most of the hand and forearm muscles for grip strength. The median nerve travels through your wrist and into your palm through a special passage called the carpal tunnel, made up of the ligaments and carpal bones in your wrist. If there's any pressure within this tunnel or on the tunnel, it will affect the nerve, causing pain, numbness, weakness, or tingling. We now know that some of us have a greater chance of putting pressure on this nerve, based on our individual anatomy and the activities we do, or micro-trauma that we may undergo in the normal course of life. For example, those of us with carpal tunnels that are slightly smaller are more prone to placing abnormal pressure on the median nerve. Individuals working in manufacturing with small tools or anyone that places repetitive stress on their hands or wrist through constant flexion and extension are more likely to develop carpal tunnel syndrome because they're more likely to cause damage or swelling to ligaments in that area. Any activity that may increase pressure on the carpal tunnel will affect the median nerve and cause weakness or nerve sensation deficiencies, such as numbness and tingling. In addition to repetitive stress, carpal tunnel syndrome can also be the result of a cyst in the wrist area, abnormal hormone levels, or fluid retention after pregnancy. CTS can also be the result of misalignment of the carpal bones in the wrist. The factors contributing to your CTS may be easy to identify, or they may be slightly more difficult to recognize. Sometimes a special electrodiagnostic nerve conduction test is needed to determine where the nerve is slowed down and whether there is severe or mild pressure on the nerve. This test will distinguish whether or not carpal tunnel syndrome is present. 
Once your symptoms are identified as carpal tunnel syndrome, your provider's treatment will be designed to alleviate and help promote the healing of the tissues involved in the compression of the median nerve. Getting the biomechanical causes corrected and reducing tissue inflammation around the nerve compression will help you experience lasting freedom from pain and numbness. Reducing the likelihood of surgery or an unhealthy reliance on temporary pain relievers is just one goal of your treatment plan. It will be important to commit to your health provider's recommended treatment plan in order to get the best pain relief and hopeful reversal of this condition. Treatment often consists of therapy involving therapeutic modalities to the wrist or forearm. Sometimes chiropractic adjustments to the wrist bones are utilized. Wrist braces and vitamin B6 therapy are also forms of assistive therapy. Special stretches and exercises, as well as correct utilization of wrist posture while performing daily activities, are also recommended. Each and every therapeutic recommendation by your doctor of chiropractic is designed to help you avoid the long-term consequences of carpal tunnel syndrome. Treatment can help you avoid permanent loss of normal grip strength, atrophy, or muscle wasting of the thumb or palm muscles, loss of sensation in fingertips and hand, expensive surgery, or other more invasive treatments which may be necessary if your condition goes untreated. Successful partnership with your doctor of chiropractic in the treatment of your carpal tunnel syndrome can help you restore the function of your wrist and hand, help you get back to work and enjoy those activities that you've had to give up due to your pain and discomfort. Freedom from carpal tunnel syndrome is possible by coming here today and visiting with your doctor of chiropractic you are on the right path to successfully improving your condition. But remember, it's important to follow the treatment and home instructions given to you by your provider in order to get the best results.